Hello, my friends. So here we are, Thought Shifting Thursdays, and I'm really, really um, pleased to be speaking with you today about this subject of emotional healing or deep emotional healing um, and some various techniques that have helped me in my journey of emotional healing. So a uh, little bit of history. So, um, yeah, I started out, um, I started meditating when I was 18 years old. And um, that was a profound experience, def definitely life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. Been meditating now for um, 64, so do the math. <laughs> and um, and so uh, and then <clears throat> in my um, and I had some mystical experiences, by the way, um, as a result of my meditation practice. And then when I was about 23, then I met someone who introduced me to new thought uh, philosophy. And then I found a community of people who actually understood what I understood, which is that we're all one. And I went through uh, new thought training and eventually just had a, a calling at some point to become a minister, so I was ordained after a five-year uh, training period. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and, um, and, but what I found in New Thought at the time is that they didn't have a lot of, they had very few um, practices or exercises or techniques for emotional healing. So that's when I got into, into spiritual psychology. And now, thank goodness, New Thought has changed. In fact, one of the reasons I think that my book, The Magic of the Soul, has been embraced by New Thought, and, and there's a brand new curriculum that I wrote coming out, by the way, um, that's going to be a core curriculum for uh, Centers for Spiritual Living. It's been curriculum, it's been an elective for um, the last, I don't know, 17 years or so. Um, but we've done a new curriculum and it's updated and it's including a lot of the understanding and practices I've learned in the last 17 years. So it's uh, highly updated and, um, and it's becoming a core class, a core curriculum. <clears throat> um, but one of the reasons I think it's been so embraced by New Thought is because it includes exercises for emotional healing. It really is a combination of New Thought philosophy and spiritual psychology techniques. So um, I got into spiritual psychology and, um, and it, again, because I had a lot of repressed emotion from my childhood that I hadn't dealt with and that New Thought helped me to some degree in some ways to help with it, but not in releasing that emotion and healing that emotion in a deep way. And so um, through uh, spiritual psychology, psychosynthesis of the system that I studied with for five years with the late Dr. Vivian King, I learned a number of techniques, which I'll, uh, some of which I'll share. Um, but one of them that I, around that same time, I got into a process called body electronics very very interesting uh, system and I'll tell you a little bit about it and then I'll get to the technique that I developed for myself that was influenced by body electronics. So in body electronics um, you'd have a facilitator and it was always done in a, in a group setting um, and you oftentimes in the workshops and so you'd have like you'd be lying on a um, massage table and you'd have two or three, maybe four people uh, surrounding you. And um, instructed by the facilitator, they'd be holding your various uh, pressure points. And then um, you'd shift from different, from one pressure point to another based on the kind of emotions that might be coming up. And you'd be laying on this table for like three hours and you'd be going through an, uh, uh, an emotional, cathartic experience for that whole three hours. And so one of the interesting biofeedback um, elements to, to this process is if I'm holding somebody's points um, just before they go into a cathartic release, whether it be anger or fear or, or, um, or rage or pain or sadness, whatever, um, just before they start to go into a, an emotional release, the points would start to heat up. And the more intense the release became, the hotter the points would get 
to the point where you'd give anything to let go of those points. They'd be so hot. Um, actually, your fingers would blister um, holding these points. And then, just before um, the catharsis would end, or, you know, one, it would cycle in and out, but just be for the ending of a particular catharsis, um, the points would start to, to, uh, to cool down. And so it was this interesting, very pa uh, fascinating biofeedback element to it. Um, so what you were encouraged to do um, is to just release whatever sound wants to come out. Just be aware of, as your points are being held, what images are coming up. And they might be images from childhood, might be images from a few weeks ago, a traumatic experience, might be images from past life experience. And so, um, and you know, the cause, and it and, and didn't have to actually have even conscious memory of these experiences. And again, it might just be images, flashes, uh, traumatic experiences. And so, again, the, you would cycle in and out of different emotions. So it might start as sadness and crying. And then you're just being encouraged the entire time to not only let out the feeling, but intensify it. Um, and to sometimes just to open your throat and let the sound out. Sound is very important in this process. And um, then it might go from sadness, uh, crying, into rage or screaming or whatever. Then it might cycle into, into laughter. Actually, I hadn't done this practice in a long time, and as a result of a conversation with my, uh, my chiropractor and friend, Janice Kalick, I agreed to do this process for myself this morning. And all that came out was just laughter, I mean, intense laughter, and it was um, a wonderful release. And so laughter would come out, would cycle in as well. Um, and so, you know, I, I never took the training um, as far as the, uh, there's a real science to what particular acupressure points would relate to what emotions. Um, but what I found in adapting this for myself um, it, it, is I developed an exercise um, that goes like this. So, number one, <clears throat> and you can adapt this to do it in, in many other ways, but the ideal way to do it is go to a place um, in nature where you can, there's no one else around. What I would often do is go to a park like early in the morning when, you know, there's no one around. And, um, and the first stage is to just run, to do some kind of physical exercise to get your heart beating, um, your lungs pumping, your blood flowing. And, um, and part of the reason for this is that I found for myself is that by um, once you're a little bit physically exhausted <clears throat> and then lie down, there's, the defenses are, um, are removed or, or lessened. And so then it's easier to get into these deep emotions. And so what I do is I would just run as long and as fast as I could, <clears throat> you know, back and forth in whatever area I was in. And then I would lie down and I would just spread out my arms and my legs and just open to the warmth of the sun, whether there's, whether it's cloudy or not. <clears throat> and, and then notice where I feel tension in my body. And some of the most common places, and I also do this with people in, in counseling sessions or coaching sessions sometimes. Um, it's not a, a work that I do a lot these days, but I have done a lot of it in the past and continue occasionally. Um, where when I'm guiding someone, I'll be pressing on those points with their permission, of course. But in, in doing it myself, I would just lie on the ground and let's say the tension is in, in, in stomach. And stomach is a very common place where we hold tension, solar plexus, abdomen, um, sometimes in the head there's, there's a, a repression there, oftentimes in the throat, sometimes heart, but it could be in anywhere in the area, shoulders, um, you know, wherever we hold tension. And, <clears throat> and so then I would just encourage myself to let the sound out, whatever it would be, that's, that is the energy that's stored in that spot. And I'd press really, really hard so that I could really feel it. And I'd do the same thing if I'm, if I'm facilitating someone else in this way. 
also do this in retreats. And actually, our last retreat in Kaline Island, we did this in partners. And my wife and I would go around and co-facilitate people who were facilitating others. Um, and so um, it can be done that way as well. Uh, but again, you can modify this to where you're doing jump, jumping jacks in your home um, to get the, you know, the blood pumping and so on. Um, you can do it uh, without the physical exercise at, at all. It still can work. Um, the physical exercise just tends to help. <clears throat> um, and if, um, you know, if you're not in a place where you can, you can scream and you need to scream, you can scream into a pillow or, you know, do what, whatever um, is necessary to let that, that out. And so you might do this for 20 minutes, a half an hour. And again, just um, let the feeling cycle in and out. And, and the one very, very important point that not all um, teachings regarding cathartic release will, will offer to you, but I have found extremely important is as soon as you complete a catharsis, whether it be, let's say you're just screaming out rage, and then all of a sudden, uh, and then you just notice a deep breath and a sigh. That means you've completed at least for a moment. That's the time to then just infill with a positive, with light, love, healing energy, whatever works for you. Because the universe abhors a void. So if, um, if we don't fill up with someone something positive after we have a cathartic release, again, whether it be screaming, uh, crying, um, shuddering with fear, laughter, whatever it might be, then it will fill up with what it is used to feeling. So, but if you fill up with something new, with the pure light of spirit, with, with just unconditional love, with um, freedom, joy, all the qualities of spirit, then those become, those fill up those empty spaces, right? Now you've got something new to hold on to. So this is something I did, um, this practice, uh, for, for maybe two or three times a week um, during a period where I really needed to, um, to release and heal these emotions. Now, um, one of the reasons I really thought this is an appropriate to a topic for this time is I'm finding a lot of people have a lot of emotion needing be, be, to be relieved released during COVID and, and the lockdowns that are happening and, um, you know, not having contact with our loved ones and so on and so forth. So um, really encourage your, your, you to give this a try and see if it's helpful for you. Also, I did a, um, you know, the Thought Shifting Thursday for a, a couple weeks ago, I talked about the balance between um, positive thinking and emotional release and healing. And so um, you can go back and watch that. Just find it on my Facebook page or any of the social media where we post these. Um, and then I said that in the future, I was going to do it last week, but of course last week was Thanksgiving Thursday, so I focused on gratitude. So I said that we'd, we'd spend some more time on emotional healing since that is really important for this time. So I give you that practice. That is the most um, visceral and important practice I can offer. Um, so let's see, um, what else did I want to offer around emotional release? Uh, again, uh, one more thing around the subject. So one thing that I do in my morning meditations, I mean, because, you know, some of my thought shifting Thursdays, I've talked about living from an inner experience of freedom and joy. And what I talked about two weeks ago, by the way, is, you know, in positive thing, we, we, we begin... Most of us begin our spiritual path or self-growth paths with some kind of teaching around positive thinking. And then we find, as I did, that you can only get so far with that. And so you, then you delve into the emotional work, the shadow work. Um, <clears throat> and then what is, I've experienced is I come out of that, having done years and years of decades of, of, of shadow work and emotional healing, is a level of positive thinking that is not positive thinking as a um, as a dichotomy or a paradox of dichotomy toward um, 
emotional healing because sometimes if we're doing positive thinking we can inadvertently be repressing emotions but having done this work and having a balance now between positive thinking and and uh, and emotional healing is there's a positivity that that includes emotional healing that includes my my feeling nature and so <clears throat> it's at such a high level now that I rarely feel sadness I rarely feel anger and all of that you know is also tied into my practice of non-attachment and many other uh, practices in my spiritual practice um, so I don't have I don't find myself needing to do this very often um, but this this morning as a result of my conversation with my chiropractor last night um, I did this exercise and and um, so what I do um, normally and, and because it doesn't happen very often but it used to happen more frequently is when I sit down to meditate is I'll just notice is there any tension in my body or it might come out as I start to meditation oh wow feeling tension somewhere um, as I'm doing mindful mindfulness meditation so then rather than just going deep into, into meditation to heal in that way I will first let out the emotion so um, and this may just be you know for five minutes right so again it might be anger it might be sadness and I might just go through a mini session of what I described earlier um, and then again what I find is when I go into my meditation is those meditations are deeper than if I didn't do the cathartic process uh, at the beginning of the, of, of the practice um, I like to look at it this way if I if I meditate and I'm half filled with sadness or anxiety then I can only fill up halfway with spirit um, or, or maybe a little bit more as it sinks down into those feelings but if I release that energy first now I'm an empty vessel that can be filled completely with, with spirit and in fact then overflow um, so I leave you that practice as well as part of, as part of meditation um, <clears throat> finally I'll talk a little bit about voice dialogue I just did a voice dialogue um, process with a client this morning and voice dialogue is the most important excuse me the most powerful work I do with with people the most important work I do is the pivoting practice which I shared in a, a previous uh, thought shifting Thursday and I'll have to revisit that again uh, soon um, but the the voice dialogue is the most powerful work I do with people and essentially you know everyone's heard of the inner child the, the inner hurt child inner critical parent well these are sub personalities um, is the term we use in spiritual psychology parts of ourself parts of ourself that have been repressed um, parts of ourselves that we haven't don't have full access to and what I found in doing um, voice dialogue with I've probably done this with thousands of people now um, is that the 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 parts of ourself that we think are the problem within us actually contain uh, the qualities that we most need in order to move forward and create the lives that we want to live and so <clears throat> to give you an example um, if someone um, if someone has uh, let's say that we think anger is not a good thing and so I'm repressing anger what I find is that people who have a lot of repressed anger when they embrace their anger then they automatically have more power in their life people who um, have a lot of repressed pain um, and or sadness are people who have a hard time having compassion for other people because if you're thinking it's not okay to feel pain and you're repressing it you don't like that part of yourself then you're not going to like seeing pain or sadness in other people um, but once that sadness is embraced and expressed then compassion is uh, for self and others is automatically um, comes in uh, becomes accessible so I'll get more specific um, let's say it's 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 a critical voice 
that we don't like in ourselves. And so we're resisting it. And we hear this critical voice over and over, right? And so we're thinking, gosh, if, if only I could get rid of this critical voice, then I'd be okay. Um, when we do a voice dialogue with someone, what we find is, is every subpersonality, every part of ourselves has a, um, a positive intention. It just doesn't know how to get that intention, um, how to, to express it in a skillful way. And so the critical voice is simply trying to get us to be better people. And it's almost always a parental voice that we integrated, that, we, um, that we've accepted and embodied, right? Um, and so when I then do the voice dialogue and find out what it is, uh, what are the positive qualities and what does this part of myself need? Well, every subpersonality needs love, needs attention, wants to be respected. It's just like a person, right? Um, but because we think it's the problem and because we are pushing it away and, and therefore not owning it, um, we're, we're doing the opposite of that. We're not respecting it. We're dissing it, right? Um, and, so, and, and, the, and so those positive intentions and positive qualities, by the way, um, so the positive qualities of the critical voice are, and just notice this in yourself as I say it, the critic is powerful, right? It's an overwhelming, uh, controlling energy, right? That can control us and make us feel guilty and, and, and ashamed and so on and can um, cause all kinds of havoc in our life and keep us from doing things that we want to do. Um, but really, the critical voice is, again, just trying to get us to be a better person. It's just doing it in a non-skillful way. But it's powerful. It's consistent. It shows up, you know, whenever um, we're trying to do something new or, or we, we make a mistake. There's that critical voice, right? Shows up every time, on time, um, uh, consistent, reliable, all of these positive qualities. So when I'm doing a voice dialogue with someone, I honor that subpersonality for these qualities. Um, and they love to be honored, by the way. And then we find out what it needs. Okay, well, what it needs. And by the way, by honoring it, 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 it gets the understanding that, oh, gosh, I haven't been getting this honor. Honoring. So I'll, then I'll have the subpersonality talk with the, the higher self of the individual and ask, and, and ask for what it needs. I need to be honored. I need to be loved, cared for, and listened to, and, and respected for how I've been trying to help you. I realize now um, that the way I've been helping you isn't helpful. By the way, the question I ask that that um, almost every subpersonality, certainly every subpersonality that is ready to be integrated, will answer in the affirmative is, what would it be like if these positive qualities could be channeled in a way that helps your, <clears throat> your host, um, higher self, person, um, live the life that they want to live, and you would be honored for your part in that process? How would that be? Subpersonalities will almost always say, yes, I'm up for that. So then they ask the, 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 the person, um, by the way, if you go to the, my website, there is a, um, a meditation. Just go to the publications, meditations, and you'll find an exercise. Let me actually tell you the name of it. <clears throat> it's on the CD. It's on, um, and it's called Exercise for Healing Emotional Patterns. And um, so you can go to the, to the website and you'll find that there is a, uh, uh, a guided meditation to actually do this process. Of course, it's on the, because uh, it's on the CD, it's only about, I don't know, eight or ten minutes. So it's much better to have a, a full on. And by the way, I will throw out there right now, if you want to just put, put a comment um, that you'd like to do a session with me with a voice dialogue, and I'd be happy to do that with you. And if I'm booked up, then I'll, um, I will uh, refer you to one of my coaching uh, certified coaches that have um, I've trained in this process as well. Um, so subpersonalities want to help. Again, they just don't know how, how to help in a skillful way because they're still doing it from an age of when they were born. 
<clears throat> which is probably around three or four years in, old in most cases. <clears throat> um, but I'm going to give you a technique to, 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 to really simplify this. Um, uh, uh, actually, let me back up a little bit because I want to talk about um, the, the hurt child, right? So the hurt child, that was some what came up in the, the exercise I did with a client today. You know, the, the qualities obviously are sensitivity, playfulness, creativity. Um, but, you know, in this case, the hurt child was like, was um, not wanting to move forward. And, and I had this happen in my own, in my own life in, in healing this part of myself. That part, the introverted part of myself, didn't want to move forward and to be successful and to be out there in the world and be doing, you know, Facebook Lives in, fr in front of, you know, hundreds of people. <clears throat> um, as my dog's barking. Mommy's not home today, so they're restless. <laughs> um, so, um, so you know, the, the, these positive qualities then become ac accessible once we find out what it needs. That inner child needs to be honored and loved. Both sides of the, you know, subpersonalities um, uh, show up as in pairs, and they're always opposites. Critical parent, hurt child. And so they, they show up in our lives in exactly the opposite way. But what they need, what they're trying to get is the same thing, is love and understanding and respect and uh, even honoring. So the way to really simplify this and do this um, just kind of on the fly is anything, it is anything that you don't like in yourself. Is imagine it is a small child that's showing up to you in that way. So if, you know, oftentimes I even hear spiritual teachers say, you know, we have to embrace our shadow, embrace our, our, our fear and our anger and our, our pain. But then, um, you know, a few sentences later, they'll, they might say, you know, but if I've got this fear, I've got to get over this fear. Well, if you said to a small child, I have to get over you, how would it react? It will become more fearful, right? So that's the practice, is imagine anything that you don't like in yourself, whether it be fear, whether it be anger, whether it be um, pain or sadness, is a small child coming to you. How would you want to respond to a small child for which you are its loving parent that is afraid? You would say, it's okay. You would hug it and say, I'll keep you safe. If you said, I'm going to get over you, or I'm going to set you aside so I can go, you know, become the person I want to become, it'll, um, it will resist. It'll scream even louder. Um, you've heard me say this, I probably say this every um, Thought Shifting Thursday, and as I've said before, like 40 times a week in my, in my, with my clients, with my teaching, uh, workshops, classes, and so on. What we resist not only persists, not only persists, but magnifies. What we embrace becomes our ally, our teacher, our healer. So, simply love every aspect of ourselves. That's how we heal at a deep, uh, at a deep level. That is the deepest and most healing shadow work that can be done is to simply love every aspect of ourselves. And so, I will leave you that with that for this Thought Shifting Thursday. Um, love to all of you. And oh, by the way, I'm going to be putting out uh, on social media and through my contact list in a little bit. We've decided, even though we've only always done it in our home, we are going to do a Zoom um, shamanic intention setting ceremony on New Year's Eve, which we've done for the last... Uh, 17 years here in our in our home and it's not a, a ceremony I'd normally do by zoom but because I'm thinking that this is a year where people more than ever before are ready to release what's happened in the past and set their intentions for the future um, we're gonna do it so you'll hear more about that and I invite you to come so um, love you all and we will see you next week I will probably be at a different time next week because I have something scheduled for noon. Uh, it'll be either earlier or later. We'll see. But you'll find me. 
All right. Love to you, my friends. We'll see you soon.